Okay, so what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about something that is known as continuity. This is one of the easier ideas that we cover in calculus, to be honest. So hopefully you'll be able to grasp what's going on fairly quickly and everything will just kind of make sense. So here we go again talking about continuity. There are two different types of continuity that we talk about. One that you're probably fairly familiar with and one that you're not quite as familiar with that has more to do with calculus. When we look at a function in general, or when we're looking at a function on a given interval, so between two different x values, if we say a function is continuous um, in general, then basically what we're saying is as we look at how the function is drawn from left to right, a function is continuous as long as you don't have to lift up your pencil. So most functions you look at are pretty much continuous at anywhere. Now, if there is a break in the graph at some x value, you might see them different ways. Like you might see them as asymptotes, like right there. Or there's another asymptote on that graph. Or possibly like a hole in the graph is also considered to be what is called a discontinuity. It's a break in the graph. All of these graphs, if they have these characteristics, then we say that these functions are not continuous in general. Okay, and there's another one right there where that's not necessarily an asymptote. The graph just kind of jumps from one place to another. And that type of continuity is easy. You can look at a graph really fast and say, oh, that graph is continuous, or oh, that graph is not continuous just by looking at it. Okay? When, what we're going to start looking at is whether or not a function is continuous at a specific x value. Now, that's different because I can say that a function is continuous certain places, and other places it is not. Now, here's the actual definition of, the, like the calculus definition that we look at, uh, when we say something is continuous. As you can see here, this is just saying the, lim the one-sided limit from the positive side is the same as the one-sided limit from the other side, and those are equal to the function value. Now, what that's really saying, honestly, is that's just a really complicated way of saying, okay, I am looking at a specific x value, not a whole bunch of them like we were before when we were talking about continuity of a function. Instead, I only want to know if something is continuous at a specific x value. And so what that means is I want to look at a graph and I want to look at a specific x value. And really what I'm saying is as I pass through that x value, do I have to lift my pencil? Okay. I mean, that's really honestly all it's saying. It's not saying anything really complicated. It's just saying, hey, as I look at this graph, do I have to lift my pencil as I go from one, as I pass through that point? If the answer is no, I don't have to lift my pencil, then the function is continuous. If I do have to lift my pencil, then we say the function is not continuous, and we look at it a little bit more. So if I was to look at this graph, okay, there's an asymptote at x equals 3 on this graph. Okay, so if we were to say, hey, is this graph continuous at x equals 3, we would say no, because that's where the asymptote is. But if I were to ask you, is this function continuous at x equals 8, you would say yes, because as I draw this graph, as I go from left to right, then I can see that at that point, then I, I don't have to lift my pencil as I cross through that point. There's no asymptote there. And so if I look at a graph like this, like we can see that there's a jump at x equals 1. Okay, So I'm looking at that, and I'm like, um, I'm looking at it, and I see that there is a jump. If I, look, if I think about it for a second, I say, OK, the left-handed limit is negative 1. The right-handed limit is positive 3. And the function value, so f of 1, is equal to negative 1. That, the, if I look at it like that, then, and I say all these things, so the limit as x approaches 1 from the left is negative 1. From the right is 3. And f of 1 is negative 1. Notice that those three numbers are not the same. I mean, two of them are the same, but they're not all three the same, which means that I actually have a function that is not continuous at that point because those three numbers don't match up. And so really when we're looking at these things, we just have to realize, especially on the AP test, that that's what they're expecting you to do when you're asking about continuity. So just be aware of that, okay? Um, so if I were to ask you, on, like on this, look, looking at this function, for example, if I were to ask you, is this function continuous at x equals negative 8, you look at the graph and say, at negative 8, oh, I don't have to lift my pencil as I draw through that point, so the function is continuous. Same thing is true at negative 6. It's getting close to that asymptote, but I still don't have to lift my pencil as I cross through it. At negative 5, you'll notice, right, there's this asymptote right here, and that occurs at negative 5. 
And so we would say that the function is not continuous at that point. And at x equals 0, I don't have to lift my pencil. So I, as I draw through it, I can say that that function is continuous. At x equals 2, there is a second asymptote. So we would say that the function is not continuous. At x equals 5, we do not have to lift our pencil as we cross through it. So we would say that that function is continuous. And hopefully all of those make sense as far as how continuity works. Now, when we have, when we have to lift our pencil, we have what is known as a discontinuity. And there are three different types of discontinuities that we worry about, okay? Uh, there are other ones that we look at, but we don't, we're not going to talk about in this class because they don't really occur on the AP test. There are, there's a jump discontinuity, a removable discontinuity, and an infinite discontinuity. A jump discontinuity is a discontinuity at a specific x value where we change suddenly from one y value to another. So it looks like the graph has jumped all of a sudden. So like on this graph, at x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3, all of the, at all of those places we have a jump discontinuity. Okay? At this one, notice there is one jump discontinuity at x equals 2. Jump discontinuities are fairly easy to identify, as are infinite discontinuities. When we have any sort of asymptote, we have what is known as an infinite discontinuity. The reason why we call it infinite and not jump is there's no specific y value that we can say it's changing from one to another. So that's why we call it an infinite discontinuity. Again, asymptote here at x equals about one, maybe two. Uh, this function has an asymptote at x equals negative two. Wherever those asymptotes occur, we have what is known as an infinite discontinuity. All right. So a removable discontinuity, um, it's a little bit unique in that it is the only one of the three types of discontinuities that we're talking about that the limit still exists. Like I, the left-handed limit and the right-handed limit in these problems are matching up. Okay, it's, It looks like a hole in the graph. Now, sometimes the function value does not exist. Like on this function right here, you'll notice there is actually no y value that is associated with, we're calling it x equals a down here. So there's no y value with that one. That is a removable discontinuity. As is this one, although on this removable discontinuity, you can see, hopefully, that the function value still exists. So there's a function value here, and it is different than the limit. That's why that is a removable discontinuity. Okay, so if I saw a function like this, I would say, okay, what type of discontinuities do I have? All three of them exist on their, on this picture. At x equals negative 3, we have a jump discontinuity. At x equals negative 1, we have an infinite discontinuity because we have an asymptote there. And at x equals 2, we have a removable discontinuity because the limit exists at x equals 2. Now, if we don't have a picture of the graph, what we have to do is we kind of have to go back to our definition of what the domain is of a function because where we generally don't have, where we have a discontinuity is where we have a domain restriction. So like on this first one, we would set the bottom equal to zero and I would get that x equals two is where the discontinuity is going to occur. The same thing is true on this one. x equals two is where that discontinuity is going to happen. Then if I factor down this, the bottom of the third function here and set those equal to zero, I would get x equals negative three and positive two. So that function is going to have two different types of discontinuity. Now, I look at this first one, and any time the bottom is equal to 0 and that's it, we have an asymptote at that point. And so we would say that we have an infinite discontinuity at x equals 2. We can do that without knowing the picture of the graph just based on characteristics of these types of functions. If we go over to h of x, we notice that at x, x minus 2 is on both the top and the bottom. So at x equals 2, we have a hole in the graph, which we call, so at x equals 2, we have a removable discontinuity. And then we also have a, an infinite discontinuity at x equals negative 3. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense as far as what type of discontinuities we have there. Now, when we have an absolute value like this, and you'll notice the same things in the absolute value that's on the top, Instead of having an infinite discontinuity, and you can go and graph this on your calculator if you want sometime to kind of see what's going on, but what we have here is a jump discontinuity. The graph ends up looking a little like this. I guess I can draw it for you. It looks like that. this is a straight line, then all of a sudden it jumps up here. 
I can see what those y values are, so that's why we call this a jump discontinuity instead of a removable discontinuity, or instead of an infinite discontinuity, even though that's generally what happens when we have some sort of um, where finding where the bottom is equal to zero. Lastly, if we have a piecewise function, and I want to know if the function is continuous at x equals 4, in other words, I want to know if the function is continuous as we transition from one function to another, what we do is we look at the two separate functions that make up the piecewise function, and we insert the x value in for each of the x's. It's almost like we're doing a one-handed limit for both sides, and if you think about that, that kind of makes sense. And I want to see if those two things match up. You'll notice in both cases, as I evaluate this function at x equals 4, I get negative 3 both times. What that is saying is, as I move transition from one function to the other function, they meet up, and so I don't have to lift my pencil, even though we're talking about two separate functions. So hopefully that makes sense when it comes to continuity. This is not an idea that's incredibly difficult, but I wanted to make sure we knew what we were doing because as we move forward, continuity is actually very important, even though it's fairly easy to understand. If you have any questions about this, please come on in and I can help you out.